I'm sure Asma Jangir is listening to this conversation um, from up in the skies, from the heavens. And I want to thank her, not, for, not only for what she did when she was alive, but also for triggering a process that has at least enabled me today to speak to so many young uh, aspirant members of the legal fraternity to talk about climate justice in the context of questions that the chair has asked me to raise. So it's a unique opportunity for me. Aapne, your question is that what are the gaps in policy? I wish to submit the policies should never be seen in isolation. Policies need to be reviewed or looked at in the context of the institutional capacity. An A-class document that does not have A-class institutions to support uh, will have several challenges. Second point in this regard, um, policies sometimes lack priorities. When you have urgencies of the kind that we are facing, question is, what are or ought to be our urgencies? And I wish to submit three. I don't know if they are covered in the policies uh, that the people have referred to. Uh, first, that climate vulnerability is first and foremost a local vulnerability. Its solutions lie in local action. Uh, I think Baba John highlighted that very eloquently, uh, that how local knowledge and wisdom can guide. Um, and local action can be facilitated only by local governments, not simply by procedures for or rules for local governance, local government. Unfortunately, People's Party, Pakistan Muslim League, PTI, all leading parties in the countries have been reluctant to introduce and initiate the third tier of our governance. And that is people's rights that has been denied. And unless local government is there, municipal services cannot be delivered. And municipal services, a new name for them, are the environmental services. That is sewerage, that's drinking water, that's passage for storm water, and things of this sort. That's protection of communal lands, Jinkum Shamlat Kate. And that is the function of local government. And that is the first step to resilience. Imagine for a moment when you don't have that, you will have only the military to come, which will have better discipline, better equipment, and stocks to undertake relief services. When you do that, that means that the civilian operators has collapsed or does not exist to begin with and cannot deliver and take charge of their lives and livelihoods. So my first submission is that in terms of gaps and priorities, where is the local government? Where is the local action? Where are the local adaptation plans of action? Unless we have local adaptation plans, we will be undertaking a very expensive uh, path of development that can be wasteful, that can be slower, that can be riddled with corruption and, and elite capture. Uh, my second point that I wanted to make, that like human beings and other species, water bodies also have right to life. Be these rivers, be these lakes, these, these groundwater. Now, if we violate their right, we are encroaching our river banks. We are building human settlements on their way. We are inviting trouble. We can never succeed. We can never conquer water. Uh, most of the damages that have happened in this country because of floods, 2010 was mentioned, I, I guess, and these ones also, are because that we interfered in the passage of the water. We did not respect its right to flow. And there are many reasons you know one particular reason is land use and land use planning laws either do not exist or they are very weak or they are not adhered to or complied with. And violation oftentimes 
happens because of absence of local government. Because then the functionaries can issue permits and licenses. And that is why the housing societies, yesterday I think I heard the, 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 the chronic issue of plots. Uh, a lot of areas that was communal land and forest and state forest and shamlots then goes to elite housing societies. And now, as we see on TV screens, they're moving to the next band. It's not only Lahore, Karachi, and big cities. It are the smaller towns that are dotting in city. And that's very closely linked, as Justice was saying in his keynote address, to the food security uh, issues as well. So therefore, uh, my second point, in order to conclude, is let's respect water and that can, uh, water bodies and their right to live. Uh, it's not always the legal issues. In some countries, they try to make it a legal right. The challenge in its enforcement, particularly for weaker governance, but it's an ethical and human survival issue in many other sense. My third and last point, in terms of urgencies. Uh, resilience is a function of resilient infrastructure. If the standard of our infrastructure were defined uh, defined and introduced by the British Raj period, we are bound to err, bound to be vulnerable. Therefore, my submission is that we need to have augmented, strengthened, improved construction standards, uh, materials, uh, building codes, and zoning laws. If in Balochistan, people have a house in Balochistan, it doesn't surprise me. Why it will surprise anybody? If more than 70% of houses in Sindh have collapsed only because they were kacha houses, that is our fault. It is not their crime that they are poor. So this is because we have not invested enough thinking in our policies and in our budget allocations to ensure that our infrastructure is resilient our bridges, our roads, our other infrastructure, and particularly a resilient housing is the most important one because without shelter, uh, human dignity is compromised. Imagine if we are living with our families and children on the roadside without any facilities. So I conclude that now we are talking what to do. Let's not invest in fragility. We are preparing ourselves for the next floods, if you're asking people to reconstruct same houses at same locations, with same materials, at same flood prone areas. And the governments and, and some very leading NGOs that are being promoted these days are all doing that, and that is not a good news for us. This is a road of maladaptation. The infrastructural investment that Pakistani state has done has reduced from 15 billion a year in PSDP to five, and because of these disasters, this uh, 500 billion, and because of these disasters, we don't even have 500 billion. But whatever loans or grants or international finance that we are seeking, donations and philanthropists we are reaching out to, I think we'll be failing them, we were cheating them, unless we address these three questions of local government, respecting the right of the passage of water bodies and infrastructure that is climate resilient. Thank you very much.